Greetings, everyone, from uh, uh, Mr. Kit Kat and me. <laughs> hey, um, hope you're all well today. Um, so, yes, this is actually round number two because I had started my I had started my recording um, about an hour ago, just over an hour ago, and. Uh, and then all of a sudden we had load shedding, which is no electricity. So uh, I had I had done I'd recorded all of less than five minutes. So uh, we're back. <laughs> we're back. Hopefully to stay for the time being. Um, who knows? Hey, depends on uh, the generosity of Escom. Of course. So let's let's have at it then while we while the going is good. Um, basically, what I what I just done in that in that <laughs> all of two minutes that I had act, actually been working, I obviously introduced and what have you, and then and then started working and then kicked in. So all I had done really was just to start a little bit of add a little bit of green up the top there. That's all. Anyway, so we can continue, hopefully unabated this time. I just wanted to start defining these, no, not defining, that's the wrong, wrong word to use. Um, just building up the, uh, the, the depth of color. Uh, and the variety of color as well uh, in this piece. Let me get a few greens on the go here. There is more in the way of suggested color and suggested uh, leaves and so on, then there is uh, actual the actual depiction thereof. Uh, so there'll be just these odd little highlights and what have you of color and so on. The rest and don't forget this is also a very much a close-up a close-up image um, I'd say these buds in, in, in real life are about oh um, must be 20 times this must be 20 times the size. I think in our previous session when I said the the the, the, uh, the size uh, difference was about four or five times, but I was actually considering my um, my reference image, which is already many times greater. So the, these little buds are are about that size. You know, they're tiny little things, but I've just zoomed right in. So therefore, it's kind of a macro, macro image. In other words, it's very, very close up. And, and therefore, um, it's only certain items, certain aspects of the subject that are, or the subject area, that are in focus. Anything that's closer is out of focus and anything that's further away is out of focus as well. So I'm just working with the per, predominantly with the out of focus stuff at this point. Uh, Just building up the depth of color and 
and so on here. And, and then I'll have the occasional little detail, uh, which I shall enhance. And hopefully it all turns into, into something that is a fairly decent piece. Um, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to tell at the stage. And as I always say, and I've let go anyway, um, but you see, the thing is, is that my, my thing is seascapes. <laughs> um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm looking to just break away from that for the time being. I'm, of course, I'll, I'll always return to them. So don't you have a fanny flap about that. Um, I'm always going to come back to my seascapes, but I just like to try and shift things up a little bit and uh, try new things. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I, I, you know, it really doesn't matter. I'm not looking to produce a, a masterpiece. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm just enjoying working with the, with the colors and, and with the techniques and whatever you, I'm, I'm learning. This is my, this is my time for learning. Uh, and even though it's, uh, uh, I'm sharing it, well, I'm sharing my learning as well. Um, so that maybe somebody can also learn a thing or two, perhaps along the way at the same time as I am. Uh, that's the beauty of it. Uh, also going to introduce and I, uh, and I haven't and I hadn't thought I would but I'm going to introduce a little bit of uh, of blue here and there as well very subtly however and it will be just just here and there uh, and it will just help to to pick up on certain things and of course this is imagined it's not it's not anything to do with my reference image, but hello, Kit Kat. Anywho, uh, I'll do more of that at a later stage. I do want to just carry on building up on this on this screen and I'm using like I said now I have one two three four five six seven seven greens one two three oh, it's eight greens sorry um, yeah that's just the greens um, and then a whole bunch of so diff different um, hues of yellow and so on. So it's it's like just slowly, subtly building up, gently building up the the uh, dimensionality of the of the artwork. Um, Kit Kat, what are you choosing to try and do here? I'd rather you didn't. I'm just you're just gonna make noise, and you've seen all these things before a million times. It's just pointless, isn't it? But you'll carry on anyway. So. <laughs> ah, my word! You can't actually sit there. Just, just please know that. But you will. Ah, yes, but you will. Come on. See, the more you, 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 the more you tell him not to do something, the more, um, the more he does it. And be looking at the light now. Come, I don't want you to. Sorry, little boy. He's starting to block off the light and everything now as well. So, 
he, <laughs> um, he always has a sense of what he's supposed to not, not supposed to do and he'll do that just just that that very thing um, you know well you can sit there if you want to but <sighs> my goodness I want to use a little bit of white now just to get some more, slightly more of the, I will not say highlight areas, but much lighter, lighter areas uh, where there's a lot of light coming in. And again, very indistinct. I think that's going to perhaps, I don't know yet, but I think that's going to perhaps um, define the character of this artwork. There's this balance of shapes, light and shade, etc. There's this, there's this kind of a flow. It's almost as if um almost as if at this stage it's even looking as if it, it's a uh, looking you'll be looking into a pond of sorts and maybe heck it's it's you know I, I, i'm doing an interpretation i'm do, not doing a i'm not doing a life uh, a realistic scene here this is this is open to interpretation yes it, it, it will take on a semblance of rosebuds etc um, however along the way you know those especially those of you who, who are following this this little journey of mine certain things will come up for you um, as it is for me right now and I'm just going oh that looks like this you know these the, it's almost as if these petals or, or leaves floating on the top of the surface of the water and there's this kind of flow um, passing through and, uh, as I'm working with this line here um, and I'm feeling its energy as well so there's even though it's a fairly static s static image and I think that's probably why I like I enjoy um, seascapes the most because they're so in water there's always movement constant movement constant flow etc um, this is a static image and yet here I am introducing flow once again so so it's almost becoming a it's almost becoming a, a liquid scene and and just through line and and these strange indistinct shapes which are realistically what they are but uh, yeah, let's see how it turns out provides a nice a really lovely backdrop at least oh no we're not done of course we, we we're we're only sort of halfway through uh or thereabouts okay so we're using nine greens then not eight Kit Kats
See, this is the thing about interpretation. Uh, and it's interesting because, especially for those of you perhaps who are, who are actually watching the, 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 my progress throughout, um, and, I've, and I've been talking about observation and what have you along the way, how we, how we perceive things and how we um, take things for granted, what we see um, at face value and in the moment type of thing. Um, or for a moment. So, at this stage, many of us might be going, "Well, okay, this is a this is a river, this is a river scene, or a pond, or a something that I can see the flow." And it's like, and go, "Well, that's what it is," um, and then move on. Where, whereas this piece ultimately if we observe and perhaps if we listen this this particular scene will evolve into rosebuds um, a depiction of rosebuds uh, but now we've already we've already um, processed what we've seen what we've perceived in the moment and moved on without actually going, well, hey, what, what could this be? What, wh where are we going with this? What is this, you know, taking pause just to go, let me listen, you know, and, uh, and this is how we do life. We see something, we, we calculate it, we assess it, we make assumptions and we move on. Not actually ever taking the time to pause and perceive or to, to, to ascertain as to whether there might be more in it or not. Whatever it may be. I don't know if I'm making myself very, very clear here, but I think what I'm saying is that is that we tend to rush headlong into life, making assumptions that aren't necessarily the truth, not even our truth, um, that don't necessarily serve us and that we don't seek to change. First of all, we don't, we don't actually acknowledge what is going on. Um, and then they become sort of limiting patterns of behavior and what have you later on. Or, or they are as a result of our limiting patterns of behavior and we, we don't seek to address them because if they don't, we don't actually understand or comprehend that they are problematic. We never take pause. We, we, we're always so busy doing life that we, that we forget or, or we, just, we just carry on because we're on this train. This train ain't stopping. Um, the train doesn't pause for any stations. It's an express train, so it 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 it. I'm talking probably <laughs> in the days when you used to have express trains and whatever. Um, but it's a train that doesn't stop. It's going from. It's going from A to B with with no stops in between. It's not a, it's not a a goods train or whatever that might might stop at every single spot along the way. Um, but we need to be doing that. We need to be slowing down a little bit. Especially when we're not, a, we, we are not actually attuned to who we are and what our choices are and what, and what is holding us back. And, and then once we've established those things, yeah, by all means, charge on forth, but Again, we've now become accustomed to understanding the whys and the wherefores of our journey. I'm rattling on here, uh, but I do see it a great deal. I do see it a great deal in how, how people, how we all kind of tend to, it is for all of us, something that actually needs to be um, um, 
it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a scenario of being consciously competent because we're so accustomed to doing life unconsciously competently in other words we don't think we don't have to think to drive a car if, we, if that's if we have learnt um, we don't need to think about changing gears and indicating and 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 all of these things um, looking in the rearview mirror um, you know we do it we do it unconsciously <laughs> We do it competently, but we do it unconsciously. Um, without thinking. And that's where the problem lies, because when we are when we are doing it, doing things consciously competently, that means we've got the wherewithal to accomplish certain things and we're working with it. We we we're engaging with the process of how we feel how we assess how we you know the results of our actions and all of that when we're learning to drive that's it you know it's it's like right now i've got to to put the clutch in and let the handbrake off and apply a little bit of um, accelerator and and so on and so forth all of these things now we we are so engaged in that process of of change of uh, new possibilities and whatever you might whatever might happen and we're learning and our and our whole being is is enveloped in this process of learning of wonder yeah what it feels like to actually drive for the first time. And I can remember doing that when I was a, oopsie, um, <laughs> I think I was 11 years old. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I, I was driving a, I was driving my brother's old VW um, Beetle. I think it was a 1956 or something like that. Um, it's called Tim the Eagle. And, uh, and I was driving it in a in a valley near where I grew up, in Bridgevale Valley, and uh, I think I got to third gear, maybe. <laughs> it's a long, you know. There was this long uh, sort of grassy area down through the middle of the valley, and I was alone. <laughs> my, well, I think it was my brother or my dad or somebody like. Took, took us down to the valley and then I was just, you know, I, go for it. Went way down to the end of the valley and came back again, you know. And that was great fun, you know. And that's when I learned to drive. I mean, I learned to drive on the on the highway <laughs> when I was 14. So the thing is, is that when you actually do it, I mean, as a child, I mean, as a kid of 11 years old, there I am driving, you know, in a car. On my own, you know, for heaven's sake, it, 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 living in a world in, in in wonder, living in wonder with with, you know, it's the same as it's the same when I when I actually went for my first flight in an aeroplane. Um, I was, I think, twelve years old, and it was a. I think I've related the story before, but for the. For you new newcomers, welcome by the way, to any newcomers. Uh, it was a it was a a neighbour one two three houses down, um, and uh, and she was a flight instructor, and so she 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 took me the one day to to Virginia Airport, which is a small a light aircraft airport and uh, and uh, and got me into a into a little Cessna I can't remember what it was uh, what what exactly it was a wing above kind of thing you know one of the a single engine wing above fixed wing um, and there you know took me up Wonder, in absolute wonder, 
there I was. I've never actually been higher than the treetops before, you know, in, in my in, in the garden type of thing and, and experience that sense of, you know, movement and whatever. And there I was in flight, left the, left the ground and now there's just, you know, the buildings recede away. Completely obsessed with this whole world that was unfolding in front of me. And that's wonder. And then she said, well, just, here we go, you know, just take over. And, and I was then, you know, I'm using the controls and what have you, and I'm flying. I'm flying this thing. <laughs> you know, it's just, that's where we need to be. Not in this consciously, uh, at least unconsciously competent way of living. We need to be constantly seeking out wonder looking at new things, accepting new things, ideas, concepts, listening to, to others, not always having to have our say. And well, how boring is that? You know, we live in a world where all we, all we know is what we know. We don't want to know anything about anybody, what anyone else thinks or knows, or, you know, we just want to make our stamp. Yeah. How much are we missing? How much are we failing to notice that we fail to notice um, in the process of that? Uh, well, <laughs> this really is look, look, looking like a, a flow of water, but it's But it ain't, and uh, it will become, hey, whatever it becomes, it becomes. Maybe it's a semi-impressionist piece, I don't know. There will be a, an item of, an aspect of uh, oh, it's actually not bad. <laughs> I'm quite enjoying this, really I am. Remember that on, on uh, the f and during the first session, and I was establishing this this kind of uh, uh, outward expansiveness to the to the line work to the technique of it. So, in other words, back down here, these the line or the flow of line was more was more at a at a towards the horizon uh, at least towards the horizontal, whereas as we move up here, it's more towards the vertical, and then crosswise this way, um, which is actually working out quite nicely, even though it's very, very subtle. There's no straight lines, so it's there's not there's no angles and so on, but uh, it's worked out quite interestingly in that sense, which I'm very happy with. I have to say, in you know, there. Um, Yeah, so that's that's kind of the story of how we do things. Um, okay, so I've got I'm use, going to be using from from the reds to the to the oranges and 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 and, and brick colored browns and so on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, yeah, seven or eight, eight. <laughs> nine <laughs> um, nine of those kinds so yeah it's it's uh, constantly this is as I said it's a potpourri of color um, but yet subtle subtly so and these are just shapes of and they and they they're indistinct because they're further away, but these are shapes of um, roses that have bloomed already and now have 
lost their luster and are on the decline but they're still showing up in, in terms of color a little bit and I just wanted to pick that in a way to paint that <laughs> Again, but they, they're very, very indistinct, so we're just uh, looking at a few reds and browns and what have you. They're in their almost autumn phase, if you look at it in, the, in terms of their lifespan. So, um, and it was, as I was saying the other day, so it's interesting to observe um, that these beetles come along and they don't eat the new buds they don't go for the new buds they go for the old they go for the old flowers that are now past the, the, the bees have been along when they were in their full bloom the bees have taken what pollen there was um, uh, and uh, the flower well, the bloom has passed its sell-by date and it's starting to it's starting to go brown <clears throat> it's starting to flake a little bit and some of the petals are starting to drop off and what have you so then the beetles come along and the beetles get into the uh, get into the core of the of the flower and, 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 and feed off that and other little tiny insects also come along and uh, obviously, obviously picking up on the decay um, and decline of this, of the, of, and, and this is all in a in, in a very really small area. It's happening all over, and there's these clusters of clusters of flowers. And on a while, if you had to Google the a, a wild rose bush, go and have a look, and you'll see that they kind of tend to form clusters of flowers or blooms. Um, and some of them are old and I did post something up on Facebook some time ago about that just all in the space of one little cluster was the, 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 the buds the full bloom and then the decline as well and all of that all of that is the kind of sort of depicting the <clears throat> life life in, 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 in a in one little square 15 centimeters life was encapsulated right there how interesting was that to observe um, and these are the kinds of things we need to uh, teach us lessons and and it, and because you know as I was, as I was, as I had been sort of thinking to myself at the time you know here we are this is life. This is life in, in a right before my eyes. And and yet the plant as a whole continues. Continues its living irrespective. Continues living. Revitalizing itself, rejuvenating itself, and it also provides sustenance for all sorts of other creatures at the same time in all of its phases the bees come along and, and, and love these rose bushes and come and collect the pollen um, and they're all about you know they're constantly testing new blooms, new uh, you know new flowers. The old ones they they touch on and pass on. Fascinating to watch, and it's just so interesting how they don't they don't simply assume and move on. They'll try it again, even if you know they might have missed something. But we. We don't want to go back. We don't want to try something again. Well, we do, but when we do, we want to try the old way 
doing it the same old way, again, definition of madness, <laughs> or insanity rather. Was it Einstein that said that? What's the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And that's what we do. But but if we if we move on with that assumption, um, that this is old, it's, well, it's gone, it's done, then we might miss something. Because where has it gone to? Okay, so I'm talking real rubbish now, so I shall, I shall cease and desist. I think where I, the lesson to be learnt is to never make assumptions based on what we, what we think we see initially. Always live in wonder. I, 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 yeah. Kids live in wonder. Everything is new. Everything is, everything is wow. Everything is unexpected, and that's where possibility lies. That's how, you know, we we, we form our ideas of where we want to go and who we want to be. As children, we do that already, and then life comes along, and and then. Uh, our environment, our social environment, and everything else comes along and puts a stop to all of that. We are born, we are born enlightened, we are born 100% enlightened as babies and if you think about it then enlightenment is wonder so we're born enlightened we lose that enlightenment through to our conditioning and then some of us go well I think I want that back so we then spend the rest of our lives seeking enlightenment. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Um, and I think that we are the only species who does that. We are the only species who does that. Ask about face. <laughs> Makes you think, doesn't it? <laughs> it's... Uh, We need a little bit more pink stink over here. And the th you know the thing is, is that is that is that enlightenment is a choice. It really is a choice. It's a conscious choice. Again, we're back to consciously competent. Now we're choosing. We choose responsibly. All those kinds of things, but they're all choice. It's all a choice that we have to make. And, and in, in doing, in making choices such as that, we have to let go, let go of what we know, Get, let go of what we're told, what we've become so well accustomed to believing. 
three archon lives. And that's the interesting part because it's that's the tough part. Letting go of what we of what we've come to believe. Stop being a sheeple. <laughs> is the most difficult part of all. You know, for me, and, and, and I, th this is why I'm using this, I always use this, these sessions to process these, these ideas, these concepts, this thinking that I have. Um, in, in doing this work, and, and, my, and I, as I've explained to you, to you all, um, my biggest um, challenge artistically, just in terms of my art, my biggest challenge has been letting go. My biggest challenge has been to, to not have to have full control of the end result from start to finish, of how this was going to look. I had no idea when I began this piece that it would take on this this kind of liquidity, this flow, this, no, I didn't have an idea. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm realizing, and even as I work, that hell, I've actually managed to let go. And perhaps not even as much as I'd like to. Um, but I am engaging with that process of just letting go and, and seeing the abundant results of that letting go. Um, and that's, to me, <laughs> and I can be in wonder. I, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling just to be, it's so, it's so uh, liberating just to let go. Just to let go. Not knowing, not having any idea of what the results might be. And just being okay with it. Being okay with it. Whatever happens, happens. And generally speaking, throughout the last number of works that I've been doing over the past, say, six months, whatever it is, let go. And, and by and large, the results have been way beyond what I could have expected. What I might have expected had I, you know. And, and there were, I, you know, that. These, these, you know, I start off with a re with a with a with a reference imagery e image, and of course, an idea of what I want to depict, seascape, whatever it might be, energizing it, etc. Along the way, um, but the results have been far better than what I had hoped to achieve. Even don't say it will be the case here. I don't know because hey, this is just coming together as I as I as I talk as I ramble on with my rambling rose. Um, so it develops of its own, in its own way, with its own set of colours, and <laughs> so I'm, I'm just my hands are just moving around. I'm just going. You know, it's 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 this artwork is is creating itself. Not to sound all dramatic about things, but that's what that's all I'm saying is that that's what letting go is. That's what doodling is about. Yeah, we're back to doodling again, and we can all do that. We can all do that. So if we can all do that. Then we can take the next the next step into into wonder, into possibility and letting go. Because if we start doing, and, and, and you know start doodling, but we're not calling it art. Oh no, we're not calling it art. I'm not an artist. I'm not creative. But hey, it's fun. You know, doodle, 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 and um, ultimately end up with a. With an artwork, actually, that we go, ah, oh, I've just done it on this little scrap of paper, oh, throw it away, it's just rubbish, but, but hey, it was, it's, 
It was therapeutic. It was art, God damn it. And and that was you being creative. <laughs> And that was you being in wonder and actual, uh, uh, you know, ah, oh, man. <laughs> anyway, enough on that for today. Seems that Uncle Eskom has allowed us to make some significant progress today. And I'll start to to bring in, it, it, it obviously does look like a, uh, you know, a stream, a river, so what if it does, but um, I'll start to create more definition and honing up, especially once I start to hone these up and just get some nice lines going in terms of the, the actual stems and what have you. Um, then it will start to take on some a significant change. As, we, as the, 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 the major role players in this piece come to the fore. I don't think I shall be using any uh, of my compressed charcoal this time because I don't want any very, very dark black spots. Not, not in this piece, not this time. Um, the uh, Compressed charcoal is, is far too black. Even if it was blended somewhat, which it, which it is easily blended, but not for this piece, I don't think. It's, it's far too much subtlety of, of light and shade. So, so to, to, to in, in, in our next session, we'll start to hint at actual little stems and perhaps shapes of leaves um, with the crisp, uh, crisper outline and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but not just yet. You know, these little, uh, these little thorns will start to take on more definition yes so that's progress <clears throat> and these little buds I shall work on in our next session as well <clears throat> to bring them into into form Colors of these little buds are so beautiful. I sort of, uh, as I said yesterday, sometimes you get this this yellowy, this green going into yellow, going into the pink, rusty, rusty colors, rusty yellow. <clears throat> so, looking to looking to bring that in a little bit. Let's try some. And that's, this is when this piece is going to slow down. And this is why I don't think that I shall complete it tomorrow uh, at all, because there's going to be a lot of this very delicate work. Not detail per se, but just delicate. Because it's a hint of color. It's a hint of something here and there that that allows for interpretation. It's 
because of the expansiveness of my of the strokes that I've been using here so far and the smudging and the, and, and the line and what have you has been very sort of uh, kind of rough um, and just flowing and what have you so it gives you that impression of, of, of water yeah which is fine which is absolutely fine <laughs> I don't want you to have an to, to have to I want you to explore and I want somebody whoever's observing and, 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 I've, and I've seen this now with people with people, people coming back to me and, and explaining and, and telling me what their feelings are and their interpretations or you know um, <coughs> and different forms come up for them as well different expressions different um, <coughs> uh, memories and all that sort of thing even different objects that are they might see in in something just as much as we we look up into the sky we lie on our back and look up into the sky above and we make out shapes of things of dragons of teddy bears and what have you in the sky in the clouds that only we can see <laughs> that's wonderful that's wonderful that's wonder <laughs> that's why it's wonderful we need to be doing more of that for goodness sake come on <clears throat> you really do The importance of idle time and and I know I shall get into trouble for saying these things but talking about being idle but uh, you know I only arrived at the con at the idea of the meaning of idle or the or, or understanding a, a different perspective on the meaning of idle um, in reading uh, Ricardo Semler's books ah good morning neighbor um, and Ricardo Semler do I have time to get into this briefly um, Ricardo Semler is a, 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 a South American businessman in Brazil um, who uh, took over his father's who inherited his father's business in 1980 he was 20 years old at the time and uh, and transformed the business it was, it was um, I think the business was marine marine engine parts or something like that marine anyway uh, marine parts and uh, for ships engines and pumps and all that sort of thing uh, manufacturing and uh, and he took it to another a completely new level in terms of how how the whole system operated um, how how people engaged with um, with one another respecting one another respecting responsibility becoming more responsible etc etc nevertheless I, 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 this is not part of the, the, the whole story but I just wanted to give you a background so so he started this he, he transformed the the way business is done um, to, to, a, to a degree that um, his his organization has now expanded into perhaps 15 or 20 different companies um, and where executives and business leaders from around the world seek him out to observe his modus operandi, the way he does the way his organizations work, how they function, why they function so so seamlessly and so well, 
Um, but the one thing, so I'm just sitting the back, the background to the fact that he is a a a, a visionary in terms of in terms of leadership, in terms of um, organizational um, in the organizational context and what have you. Um, but he said that we all need to make for idle time, make time for idle time, make time for daydreaming, make time for uh, just sitting and just without any gadgets or any um, social media influences or anything. Shut the laptops down, shut, just leave the cell phone behind, whatever, and just just be idle just be idle and and then that's when and i've then you know obviously taken that the idea of that and, and worked into it a little, a little bit more and got realized you know that's where possibility lies when we daydream and and, and we're told don't yeah don't you know you're daydreaming and, and you're lazy you're bone idle and all all this kind of thing and it's and yet all along it's important you know, you know, we were always admonished at school for for daydreaming. You know, and thinking that we, you know, people say, "Ah, oh, you're you got your head in the clouds and what have you." But daydreaming is 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 vitally important to possibility because it's where we conceptualize things. Now, if we've become so well accustomed to shutting that aspect of our lives down because it's it's not the done thing because it's you know because we now we considered now idle and lazy are are are, are considered in the same in the same sense to be the same thing not so but yeah so we need to we need to work with that and develop that and I'll maybe speak about that again in our next session because it is important. It's important to this whole process of letting go of, 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 of being consciously competent, etc. Very, very important. And it's why my art has got to where it has. Not saying this has got anywhere yet, but anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm making no claims. <laughs> But so far, I'm quite happy with where, the way this is going. Really, I am. It's a completely different piece to, to any of the others that I've done. Far looser, far... Yeah, and it's got a story. So, <laughs> the story that I've been telling all, all along, plus the story of your own imagination. Whatever it might be. Anyway, folks, I'm out of time, I believe. I think I'm nearly out of time. I don't know. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining. Thank you for bearing with me um, through my mental meanderings. And uh, do join me again tomorrow as I uh, make further progress. And I don't know where, but we're going to progress tomorrow, nonetheless. Um, so yeah, thank you for thank you for sticking around and and welcome to any new subscribers. That might have joined in the in the interim, um, yeah. And and please always feel free to engage with me, make comment, whatever it might be. I really really appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, invite your mates along too. Send it. I know these are hour long sessions, but nevertheless, um, in fact, it might be quite a little bit over an hour long session. This one because I'm rattling on. Um, so yes, oodles and oodles of toodles, and I shall see you again soon, I hope. Take care, have a wonderful day ahead, um, at whatever time of day you might be, <laughs> and uh, see you again soon. Bye, folks. Don't, don't, don't forget to do dot.